Hi. In this session, we're going to talk about loading states. When our component or our data resource needs to do something in the background and it takes a while, how can we show the user a loading state? How can we configure that in UI Builder? All right. So first off, let's open up UI Builder. And I like to use the CSM experience just because it has a lot of filled in data. If my instance loads usually on the second page, so we go into the CSM FSM configurable workspace and let's start with creating a new um, page and variant. Because the page is the route and then the variant is the actual page. So let's call this loading test. That's the page. That looks fine. We don't need a parameter. And let's call it the loading, the variant, the loading variant. Okay. So it created it something. Here we go. So let's open that. And what we'll do is we'll create a input field. And we're going to connect that input field to a data resource. So let's look up. There's a lookup records. Am I forgetting what it's called? I think so, global. Look up records, two words, add that one. Okay. And we need to select the table. So in this case, <clears throat> I've exposed the sys choice table. This one's not exposed to UI Builder by default. Um, there's a tutorial I'll link to um, in the description on, on how to expose this table. You probably won't need this table. I'm just including it because it's a table with a lot of records and I wanted to um, use a table that's um, as slow as possible so that we can actually see the loading screen we're going to uh, use. Okay, so we've added our data resource. Here it shows us a bit of the, uh, the data that it returns. Um, so let's actually add a field. Um, we want to see the label. Okay. And let's also see the value. Label and value both seem useful. Value, open, open. I think they're often the same. But that's all right for our intents and purposes. Then a um, data resource, if you go to the events, it has three types of events. Data fetch initiated, data fetch succeeded, data fetch failed. So the the loading, the the time in which a user would be waiting for the data resource to complete its operation would be in between initiated and succeeded or initiated and failed, in case it fails. So in this case, let's assume it succeeds and use these two events. Uh, so we've got a data fetch initiated. And what we want to do is we want to um, set the loading state. So set loading state. So that's a built-in event handler. And we just set that to loading. The loading text is um, chugging along with my data resource. So that's a text that we will see. Um, you can choose if there's a button, if it's blocking or not. I think those options are fine. So that's already set up. Now we need to set up another one, um, a new event mapping for when it succeeds, in which case set loading state. So we turn it off. There's text we don't need that's not relevant, and that should be correct. The button's hidden here. And then let's do the same thing just to be safe or failed because otherwise if it were to fail then we would never get rid of the loading state um, 
set loading state, turn off. Okay, that's also fine. Great, let's save that. So now the only issue is that the um, there's nothing triggering an operation on the data resource. So let's have the input field if we're able to select it. Okay, I see it's selecting the whole thing. That's fine. So we want this input field to trigger uh, a refresh of some kind of this data resource. So one way to do that is to go to the events and then check the events on the input field. There's an input input. So this one fires basically any any character that you type in. So that sounds about right. Um, what do we want to do? We want to update the state parameter and then pass that state parameter to the data resource as well. Um, but for that, we need a state parameter first. So let's create one. Let's call this um, input variable. Initialize it to null, that's fine. Okay. And then add event mapping, input input. And in this case, there's another built-in one that's useful. Update client state parameter. That's our parameter. And then a new value here, You what you want is you want to pull the value from the input field, which is um, contained within the event. And the event you get, or within the payload of the event. So the payload there, dot walk here, and then in this case, I know it's field value. Sometimes you need to log this to know, but I know it's field value. So we're going to set the field value that comes from the uh, input field. We're going to set that to the input variable state name. Okay, so now's a good point to actually debug this. Um, this is a good opportunity to show you how I would do that as well. So we can just create a button like this. And we're just going to use this button to log the state. That's the only purpose of the button. Um, how do we do that? And then we need a, a client script to log the state. Log state. Console log. All we do is log the entire state object. That's fine. Save that. And now in events, button clicked. Our event should show up there. Log state. So this will allow us to double check to make sure that what we intended to do to set that state parameter, that that's actually working. All right, so let's open the console here. And then let's type in something, log state, and we see input variable, ASD, whatever. So that's working, that's good. All right, so now it's time to go back to our data resource. And then we want to somehow trigger some operation here which makes it load. So and if you hear snoring in the background, that's my dog doing that, courtesy of Laika. Let's see here. Um, I kind of want to edit the conditions. That's what I want to do. Bind data. That sounds about fine. So here, the problem is that it's, it needs to be in a format of, of a condition like uh, it is across service now. So that looks like something um, we had the label field. So let's say we want the label to contain something. It would be label like something something. Um, for instance, if we put if we do this manually, edit conditions. I'm struggling a bit. Um, My point is that if we if we were to point now at um, at the state parameter that we created, that would not be a formal condition um, because it would just appear as ASDSD. It wouldn't say which field and you know what logical operator. So what we actually need to do first is um, 
when we update the client state parameter, we can go into script. And so here's the script version of, of updating the state parameter. And so the state parameter is still input variable. That stays the same. But the value is going to be different. Let's say we want to update the label value. We want to do contains. And then we can use these template variables. And we use the API event. Um, payload um, what was it again? something something value let me save this uh, here it helps you more doesn't it? field value that was the one okay payload oops doesn't allow you to put the cursor here another bug payload value field value all right that looks about correct so the value is going to be label like and then whatever comes from the event uh, we can even console log that here just to be sure all right cool so that means if we go back to the data resource then here we can say the condition where did you go here now it's okay to say this is state input variable because now it's in the format of a condition um all right so let's see if we've got everything in place we've got the input the input sets the state variable in a condition the state variable is connected to the data resource and the data resource has the loading state configured so this should work and it did not work why not So this event that we set up, that one is working. So it's, hmm, maybe we don't need, we don't need the event. There is an event payload. That's what I had, isn't it? Oh, there we go. Now it works. See, there's our loading state chugging along with my data. So um, and it's not just data resources that have these. Um, a list component, for instance, also has it. Um, and there's probably other components as well. So that's just a convenient way. It's the out-of-the-box way to show a loading state. If you end up putting this page as a subpage somewhere into a side panel or something like that, this will still, um, I believe, so actually, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it'll just show up on, on the page.